Today I will show you a romance, thriller, sci-fi film from 2011, titled The Adjustment Bureau. David Norris, running for the New York Senate in 2006, is a candidate who cares about people and empathizes with their needs. David's campaign is like a rocket going to the moon and shows no signs of slowing down, but because of his past mistakes, written about in an article in the New York Post, claiming he is exposed for showing his bare backside at a college reunion. On the day of the election, NBC News predicts a landslide defeat for David even before all the county ballots are counted. David sneaks into the men's room alone to think. As he prepares his speech, he finally hears noises coming from one of the stalls, showing that it is occupied. By a woman. Elise Sayas comes out of the stall, barefoot and holding her shoes. She explains that she hid there from security after crashing a wedding on a self-dare. The two hit it off right away. Elise admits that she found David's reunion prank amusing. David says he's kind of glad he did not win since he has some time to himself now, but Elise does not believe him, she thinks he loves being in a crowd. Suddenly she and David start kissing passionately as they fall for each other very quickly. They are interrupted by his campaign manager Charlie. She hastily leaves without giving him a chance to contact her because of the security guards. David gives his moving and powerful speech, but suddenly he says it's BS and it's just something that has good traction. He starts speaking authentically and gives an electrifying speech, undoing the damages public scandals have done. That makes him the frontrunner in the next election in 2010. A month later two men, Harry and his superior Richardson, meet. Harry is instructed to spill David's coffee on his shirt by 7.05, so David will miss his bus. David is now a senior partner in the firm RSR, which was founded by Charlie. Harry nods off while waiting in the park and wakes up just in time to see David get on his bus. There he meets Elise and they can hardly believe they are seeing each other again. Harry rushes after the bus. They catch up on recent events and she tells him that he needs to run for Senate again. Harry gets hit by a car and checks his notebook, discovering that David has diverted off the plan. David's phone keeps ringing, interrupting their moment, so she just throws it in his coffee. She writes her number on a card and he promises to call her, feeling like fate has brought them together. David arrives at the RSR offices and greets several employees, not noticing that they seem to have stopped in time. He enters the conference room to find Richardson there with several of his men. One of them is waving a strange instrument over Charlie, who is also frozen in time. Richardson orders his men to seize David. He flees, but at every turn, more of Richardson's men charge at him, seemingly appearing out of nowhere. Same as Richardson. David manages to lock himself in trainer's office and frantically dials 911. Richardson's men come through the locked door as if it was not locked. David is knocked out. When he wakes up, he listens in utter confusion as Richardson tries to tell his men that David needs to be reset, but the chairman would never sign an order to that effect. David has no idea what they mean or say. Finally, Richardson approaches David and tells him about himself, he has the job of making sure everything goes according to the plan. The plan is how current events are supposed to go and how people's lives are supposed to be lived. David thinks Richardson is crazy and tries to escape. Richardson bends up a small piece of the floor to trip David. He can read David's mind and they are the Adjustment Bureau aka TAP. Richardson explains that David was supposed to spill his coffee, causing him to miss his bus and get to work 10 minutes late, which would have prevented him from seeing Richardson and TAP adjusting Charlie. Now that he has seen TAP in action, Richardson needs reassurance that he will never tell another soul about what he has seen, something no human can know exists. Richardson says if David ever talks about TAB they will reset his brain, erase his personality and make him appear insane for the rest of his life. But then, to David's horror, Richardson also tells him that his meeting with Elise on the bus should not have happened and that he should never see her again. They find the card she wrote her number on, burn it, and throw him into Charlie's office. David can hardly believe what he's been through and still will not talk to anyone about it, just in case the threat of memory wipe is true. David sits amazed how Charlie has changed his mind about a proposal he was so opposed to just an hour ago. A few things don't sit right with Harry. Sometime later, David is sitting in a small bar trying to recall Elise's phone number from memory. Harry joins him and wonders why David is fixated on one woman when his whole world has been turned upside down. He tells him that he can never call her, even if he remembers her number. Harry suggests they meet somewhere else. They meet on a boat. Harry explains to him that the water prevents them from reading his actions. He tells him all about their purpose in human society, they cannot read people's minds, they only know other people's patterns, thus making them easy to predict. Basically they are angels doing the chairman's job. They will do anything to keep him away from Elise. Harry suggests forgetting about her and moving on with his life. Three years later. 
David still hopes to meet her, paying close attention to his surroundings. As he sits on the bus, he notices Elise on the sidewalk and yells to stop the bus. He catches up with her and tells her that he rode the same bus for three years hoping to run into her. They go for a walk and he swears he lost her number and does not have her last name to look for her either. Tab quickly finds out that David is off the plan. Richardson is still busy cleaning up Harry's mess. Richardson is informed that she is diverging from her path tremendously, but if she doesn't hear from David in the next 36 hours after they part ways, she will never forgive him. They notice in the adjustment, if they kiss, it will be an irreparable deviation from the plan. Charlie finds him, it was the work of Tab. David has a speech he can't skip and Elise will not allow him to skip it because of her, she says she's rehearsing three minutes away from where he's giving the speech. All according to the plan of Tab. Just as they are about to kiss, Richardson sends Charlie a message with a flick of his finger, so Charlie urges David to hurry. He settles for a cheek. Richardson sighs with relief. David promises that nothing will ever separate them and he will see her again soon. He is running again for a Senate seat. Elise's rehearsal has been moved to another location. When the speech is over, David spots Richardson at the window with his men. He suspects something is wrong. Pier 17's auditorium is closed. He tries to call the ballet company, but the call is disconnected. Tab is tracking his next moves and has already taken actions against them. David keeps running around, so Richardson decides to confront him. David asks him why they are trying so hard to keep them apart, getting an answer that it's because of the plan. He argues that the plan is wrong, even though God wrote it. So why does he feel this way? It turns out that Richardson himself doesn't know why David shouldn't be with Elise, he's just following the plan. He goes to a coffee shop and one of the patrons points out where the ballet company is. He tries to catch a cab, but is unsuccessful, Tab is hot on his heels. David does not give up, he runs after one of the cabs and they eventually stop, only to be involved in an accident. Since he's the only one who witnessed the accident, the cop tries to hold him for questioning as long as possible until he figures it out. It turns out he wasn't a real cop, but just one of the agents. Finally, he gets a cab, and offers him a hundred bucks to break a few traffic rules and manages to outsmart the tab. They try to change the traffic light, but that would have too many ripple effects, so they just let him go. Tab runs past numerous doors trying to get to the ballet company before him, just seeing her dance would turn everything upside down. Richardson drops his hat and does not manage to open the door to stop him, that's when David opens it and sees Elise dancing. Richardson tells him to celebrate now, because people more powerful than him are coming. But at this moment David doesn't care. Richardson meets with his superior and it turns out that Elise and David were meant to be together, but the plan changed in 2005 and there are remnants from old plans that keep driving them to each other. Richardson approaches Harry and tells him it's not his fault he fell asleep that day. They were meant for each other in a dozen previous plans. David and Elise visit a club, they dance, drink and have a good time. They kiss on the pier and later take it to bed. After the exercise, Agent Thompson stands over them and contemplates how to break them up quickly. In the morning, Elise is confused when she receives a call from her ex-boyfriend. She wonders why he called today of all days, and four times at that. David quickly figures things out. He inquires further about her ex and tells her that he sounds great, why did she not marry him? She didn't marry her ex because of David, a hopeless romantic. They have a romantic conversation and David, not wanting to let her out of his sight, takes her with him to an interview. While David is having an interview, a man comes in and gives Elise a message from David that it will be a while and that he will call her when he is done. To make sure David doesn't meet Elise, the same man leads him to the empty warehouse. All the doors are locked. After a while Thompson greets him. David asks what happened to free will. The last time people had free will was after the Roman Empire, the Dark Ages for five centuries. When they came back, they fixed everything and stepped back once again in 1910. Within 50 years humans brought World War I and II, the Great Depression, Fascism, the Holocaust and then they stepped in again. People don't have free will, they have the appearance of free will. Thompson then explains that it was no accident that he met Elise in the men's room, because it gave him inspiration for a great speech and made him the frontrunner for the next election. David will win the next election and four more after that and later become president. That's not going to happen if he stays with Elise. David is not okay with his destined fate, he will choose Elise no matter what. Thompson opens the gates and lets David out, he can still make it to Elise's show. There David watches Elise dancing. Thompson tells David that if he stays with her, it will not only destroy his dreams, but hers as well. Elise would become the most famous dancer in the world, but with him she would be teaching six-year-olds how to dance. Thompson says the decision is ultimately his, 
but he tried to talk some sense into him. As Thompson is leaving, he nods his head and Elise falls. David drives her to the hospital and gets her leg checked out. Thompson walks up to David and tells him it's his fault she sprained her ankle. He punches Thompson, which is his free will, just like the bar fight that cost him the last election. This time it's just a sprain, but next time he'll take away everything she cares about. He says once again that it's up to him to give her up. David is glad it's just a sprain, he hugs Elise and tells her he'll make some calls and leaves the hospital. Richardson tells Harry that it's done. Elise is heartbroken. Harry wonders if the plan is always right. The chairman has the plan and angels only see part of it. 11 months later. David has an overwhelming lead in the polls. However, Charlie breaks the sad news to him that Elise is marrying her ex-boyfriend in a week. Harry arranges to meet David at a pier and tells him that Thompson was lying about Elise bringing out his reckless side. He tells him the truth. He has a void in his heart that he fills with people cheering and voting and when he is with Elise, she will be enough for him and he will no longer dream of making it to the White House. Harry reveals to David that he feels sorry for him because his family was a sacrifice for him to be where he is now. Elise's wedding is tomorrow. David asks Harry to help him by teaching him how to teleport through the doors. He advises him to always turn the doorknob clockwise and not the other way. The doors are never locked when they are wearing their special hat. They walk through the museum and then through the pumping station. Harry asks him to wait. At that moment, David sees him turn the doorknob counterclockwise and sees other agents walk by. Harry teaches him how to navigate through doors and warns him that the moment he walks through, all hell will break loose. Assume that anyone with a hat of some sort is a threat. On the day of the wedding, Harry gives David his hat and wishes him luck. He gets out and makes a run for it. Thompson is notified and they set off in pursuit. He enters the DMV and does not lock the door. Tab has trouble tracking him down because of the hat. David loses his phone and jacket at the courthouse metal detector and finds Elise before the wedding ceremony. He tries to explain himself to her, but she pushes him back. He tells her there's a reason for everything and tells her about the angels, punches one in the face and takes his book to show her they both love each other and he wants to spend the rest of his life with her, even if it's only for a short time. Thompson is notified that he has revealed the angels to her, and they call an intervention team that will completely reset David's mind. David tells her he never lied to her, he grabs her hand and leads her through one of the doors in the bathroom to the stadium, she can't believe her eyes and they keep walking. Tab are right behind them. David begs Elise to trust him and she does. At the Statue of Liberty, she wants an explanation for all of this, and David does. He gives her a choice, walk out the door alone and she'll never see him again or come with him. Ever since he met her, he has never stopped thinking about her. Without a doubt in her mind, Elise follows David. They turn the door counterclockwise and find themselves in the main base of Tab. Tab notices them. They run up what seems like an endless flight of stairs. Meanwhile, Harry is summoned to the chairman's office. When they finally arrive on the rooftop, the intervention team is right behind them and they are trapped. They confess their love to each other and give each other a long, passionate kiss as if they'll never see each other again. When they open their eyes, the intervention team agents are gone. Thompson tries to tell them that their attempt to reach the chairman was in vain. When Harry arrives and gives him a message, Thompson says he understands and leaves. Harry says that they risked everything for each other, they inspired the chairman and he rewrote the plan to make up for the serious discrepancy and now they can take the stairs. Free will is a gift that you do not know how to use until you fight for it. Maybe that's the chairman's real plan, that one day he will not write the plan, you will.